So this little horse is Gino. It's his first day working up towards being started. And he's somewhere new and he's going to want to have a look around and kick out and do everything else. So we're going to send him around a little bit until he gets sick of playing and doing that kind of deal. I might back down and give him room and see if he wants to make that decision. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt. So we've done a little bit of approach and retreat. Now we'll go send him the other way. Because it's also very good, very important that he looks at me out of both eyes. We can kind of tell there's obviously still a lot of play in him. So I'm not in any real hurry to catch him at the moment. This is not his home property. There's a lot of horses around to see. He comes from a background where he's had a bit of handling and there's a little bit of spoilt pony in him. So some horses we're doing a lot of reassuring, other horses we're doing a lot of like, you know, playing the game of who's the lead horse. And in his case, I need, to, need him to know that I'm the lead horse. He doesn't need much reassuring. He's very confident in himself. One thing that I find watching people work horses is they're very good at being dominant or submissive, so they're happy to push them around and be aggressive, but they don't always switch off and be nice. Like, he's sort of a little threatening and I pushed him around and now two circles later, he stopped, he's looked at me and now he's like, well, if I'm nice, are you gonna be nice? Very important that I switch off. Because if I keep hunting him around, like I gotta show him who's boss, it's a missed opportunity. But when he offers to be nice, I need to go, yeah, that's cool. But when he starts showing a little aggression, I've got to be pretty quick to jump on that too, because if I get on him and he thinks he can run the show, I could be in a little bit of problem. And it's kind of the difference. We see a lot of horse training videos where we're working, you know, Brumbies, horses that have had very little handling. And those horses often need a lot of reassurance. I had a horse years ago who was very, a very abused horse. And she, um, she needed a lot of reassuring, but she would bite and strike. If you're anywhere in front of a girth, if you're anywhere behind, she'd cow kick or kick. And she was very violent about it. And I actually did a lot of time just standing around looking at her until she came and investigated and gave her a pat and then just walked off and that was like day one. But she just needed reassurance that I wasn't there to give her a hard time. This guy's a little different. He's seen a lot of people. He knows a lot of people. I need to do enough to make him move his feet, but then I gotta go backwards to give him somewhere to go to. So I've gotta push, but open that door at the same time. So that was a cool choice. He's obviously looking like he's had enough of running around the yard. I just want to make sure he's had enough of trying to run me around the yard first too. Before I move on to anything else. Good. That was nice. He's sort of in a good position here because he got the whole yard and I got no yard. but he's gonna back up and back around to make himself comfortable, which is also pretty cool. Because yielding backwards is a big deal, as well as yielding his hips to the side. I don't need him to follow me around like a puppy dog, but I do need him to show some acceptance of me being the one who's pushing and him being the one who needs to position himself to stay out of trouble. Good boy. And the following me around the yard like a puppy dog does tend to come out of that. And I can keep working on that. Or, like most of us, you know, kind of get a bit busy. So we'll move on to the next bit. So everyone kind of has their thing, how to start. I'm not saying mine's right or wrong. 
I know I've started a lot and a lot of people were happy. A lot of horses were happy with the result. So you can take from it what you want and leave what you don't. That little interaction is just about who's doing the leading again. He's like, oh, we're going over there. Well, no, you got to go at my pace. And that's very important. When I get on him, I want him to go at my pace. So we've done a lot of positioning and pressure from a distance. And now we're going to do it physically. Because when I get on him and take his nose here and go to disengage his hip, I'm obviously not doing that at a distance. I'm sitting on him, so my leg's going to go here. I'm going to get his nose this way. And I need to know that he's going to yield to that pressure and move around. The other part in horse language terms, though, is a horse who's submissive, puts his head down, licks his lips too. So if he was worried about me, he'd stand back and he'd get his head up really tall, like he did at the start. Head up really tall, ready to kick you, blah, blah, blah. Now he's kind of showing a lot more willingness to just come along and play with me. And it comes down to, am I going to ask him, you know, 50 times and get an average result? Or am I going to push and get a little bit more once or twice and then I don't have to touch it? Because he should be looking at my position and responding to my position if I stop. I'm going to do a little bit of playing around with some desensitizing. And desensitizing's a little bit overdone nowadays, I think, sometimes. I don't need him to get used to a blow-up giant pigeon pool toy, but I am going to be throwing ropes around him and my reins are going to be around him and my raincoats and stuff like that, but I'm probably not going to do a lot of pool parties with him. Hey, but having said that, you can desensitize him to whatever you feel like. I kind of laundry list of things like when I ride him I'm going to ride him in a halter and I'm going to flick the lead rope over his head and all that kind of stuff so I want to make sure he's cool with that it's okay for him to follow it's not okay for him to barge in so I bumped him back out of there so talking about going through things like if I find something that this horse has got a problem with I tone it down I do less until he's used to that and then I step it up and do more again until he's dealing with it to a level that's satisfactory for me. He's uncomfortable, but he's not going crazy. And that's all I need. And we might do some videos and we'll chase up some horses that do go a little crazy with it and see how I deal with that. But he's, he's like, yeah, I really don't appreciate that, but he's not gonna do anything too silly about it. G'day, thank you so much for watching. If you could like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications bell, that would be awesome. Thank you. Cheers. I don't think he'd do it with a lot of intent, but I'm a little bit aware of what he's going to do with that rump, which he kind of just gave to us on cue. So it's a little bit like I was saying before, like I want to have arguments on the ground so that when I get on him, I'm not going to have so much. But I was asking him to keep his distance and move forward. And he was just giving me that sort of half dirty look about it. So again, with some of these horses, he showed me a little aggression. I had to match that aggression. And then after I've matched it and pushed him around again, so again, two horses talking to each other. I'm the boss. No, I'm the boss. And they have that discussion. One gets aggressive, one gets more aggressive. Later on in the day, they're down the paddock scratching each other's neck and they're the best of friends. I need to have that conversation. It's like, well, it's work time and you know, I'm leading and you have to go with me. And he's like, no, 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 I'm very privileged. I am the leader. I was like, well, no, you can't really do that either. But when you're good, you can see that attitude there in his head. It's like, okay, you know, they, we look for those signs a lot. He's dropped his head. His expression's dropped a bit. It's like, okay, well, you can push me around. It's kind of one of those things that don't necessarily take for granted because 
he might be really cool with all of this stuff. Five minutes later, he might get scared or something. So I can't just assume that he's, he's gonna need me to, you know, show him his boss all day. Because later on, for whatever reason, he might get scared. And I need to be looking for that. I need to be responsive. Is he doing something that we'd consider bad because he's scared or because he's trying to be rude? And he's looking at me very respectfully now and staying away, which is great. It's very cool. So we'll stop him there. I've turned him loose and said, you go and do your thing. He's like, he's exploring other things. Things that he may not explore if I kept him on the lead. And of course the last lap or two he was looking like, well, yeah, I've explored that, I'm bored now. Can we stop? And he's looking for a place to stop. So now's my place to be more passive again. Not because he's a bad horse, he just thinks he's very special. But if I can prepare him on the ground and push him around a little bit and he's accepting of that, hopefully I'll have a little less of that discussion when I get on. Again, it's funny how, how many times their emotions turn. You know, and you gotta be watching to see whether you gotta be tougher or softer. But we gotta be fair in that power play. Like I said, some people are really good at bossing them around and saying, well, I'm the boss. But they're not good at switching off when the horse is looking to be nice again. And then some people just want to feed him carrots and pat them and love them. And if I love him enough, he'll do whatever I want. It makes about as much sense as raising a kid and not asking them to do anything ever. Never push them. Just let them do whatever they want. Give them everything they want. That'll make a great kid, right? I don't think I even need to answer that one. Yeah, and my issue with this guy isn't gonna be, is he gonna be quiet? Is he gonna be scared of me? I don't think he's gonna be scared at all. Is he gonna try to impose his will on me? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but it, again, it's not a win or lose thing. I'm just, I need to be the lead horse. I don't have to force my will on him or anything stupid like that. Hey. Main, saddle, stirrup. I got three points of contact and I keep those three points of contact all the way over because if he were to jump away here I need to be able to bail and pull his head towards me in a hurry. So I need to stay balanced and I need to be semi-defensive. So we're cool here. My leg's going to come over and touch that side, that side. My stirrup needs to be able to go forward and back. So we're going to check all of those things. I actually don't mind that he moves around when I get on. When he stands still, I'll get off again. I'll get up, check him out, slap that saddle, make a little noise, move that stirrup. He's going pretty good, so he might get over, just wobble the saddle a little bit. And if I didn't give him enough to think about, he'd probably get bored and I'd have a bored genius on my hands. And a bored genius can be a real problem. Because good training for a horse to me should be slightly challenging. That's all. As soon as it gets overwhelming, he doesn't want to come to work. But if I make it, you know, batshit boring, he don't want to come to work either. Yeah. This guy's had a great first day. We've had quite a few discussions about things, but he's ended in a great spot. We've got on up and down. And tomorrow when we come back, we'll refresh all of that. And probably looking how he went today, we'll probably end up riding him tomorrow. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Take what's good, throw away what isn't. And always remember, Go and pat your horse at the end of the day because he's doing the best job he can with the human he got stuck with.
Cheers. G'day. Thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. This video of Gino's journey is meant to be more of a entertainment video, not educational, as in it's not a how-to video. All horses react and start differently. If you are going to attempt to start your own horse, you really need to enlist the help of a seasoned professional or get a seasoned professional to do your horse for you and get them started. It's not an easy job and it's not a job to be taken lightly because this is your horse's introduction to the rest of his riding career and it's really not to be messed with. So take it for what it is. It's a lot of fun to watch. It's been a lot of fun to share and I really appreciate that you've taken the time to watch it and that you'll keep watching the channel. Thank you very much. Cheers.